what's up? This is all from a phone. And guys, today I start up the Corolla. First startup since I got the new motor. Psych! <laughs> Haven't even gotten my motor yet. This is not that type of video. I just want to talk about the new Supra. The 2020 Toyota Supra. Uh, you could probably get a clue of what I think about it just by the uh, title of this video. I'm I'm not a fan, guys. Not a fan. And it's kind of disappointing, to be honest with you. And this is why. I will give you my reasons. Um, these are just opinions, guys. Don't get all, you know, don't get your panties in a bunch. Um, this is just my opinion. And I've worked on cars um, my entire, well, not my entire life, but my entire adult life. I've been a mechanic. So I know a lot about cars. I know a lot about um, Toyotas. I've owned various Toyotas. I've owned an 89 Mark III Supra with a 1J, an SC300, a GS300, a 2000 Celica, an 88 Celica, um, you know, two Corollas, a Venza. So I've owned Toyotas, guys. So when I'm speaking about Toyota and my love for Toyota and why I think this Supra is a mistake, I'm coming from, you know, a place where I've owned Toyotas pretty much my entire adult life. Okay, so with exceptions of a couple cars, pretty much I would say 80% of the cars that I've owned are Toyotas. So, why do I not like this? Well, what is the first thing that you think about when you think Toyota? Most people will tell you, even like if I grab somebody off the street and I say, what do you think about Toyota? What's the first thing that pops into your head? Reliability. That is probably the word that gets thrown around the most when people talk about Toyota, Lexus, um, you know, that brand. Everyone knows that at the top of the mountain for reliability is Toyota. And for Toyota to go and partner up with BMW, like out of all car manufacturers, BMW, like, it makes no sense whatsoever to team up with somebody whose reliability, to be honest, is through the floor. Now, some people say, oh, my Beamer's reliable. Yeah, your Beamer's reliable because you own it for three years and then sell it. These cars are car guys that think that a Beamer is reliable, haven't owned one long enough to know that that is not true. So... The the fact that Toyota would put a BMW motor, the N54, I believe, is what the, the motor is, the motor code for this uh, motor. Um, that motor, yes, it sounds great. Straight six, twin turbo. It sounds exactly like a 2J, right? Perfect. But the problem is the reliability of this motor over time is not even close to, in comparison to the reliability of a 2J. Not even close. Um, there's certain things that go wrong in this car. The, to the turbochargers are known to go bad. The water pumps are known to go bad. And I'm talking from experience. Okay, I'm talking from a mechanical experience. And I'm not talking about people who drive the crap out of these cars and who ragdoll these cars. I'm talking about everyday reliability. Are people going to ragdoll the Supra? Absolutely. It is a sports car. It is meant to get ragdolled. So for them to be like, hey, let's throw an N54 motor from BMW because it sounds nice, three liter twin turbo to make people happy. Because this is the thing. Toyota for years were struggling with what are we going to put in the in the Supra? When they first came out with the idea of coming back with the Supra, they made, uh, you know, pretty much what they thought was going to happen was put a V10 in it, okay, like an F1 design motor, and call it the Supra, okay? This was their first thought. 
Then they said, we can't make a car this expensive and call it a Toyota. So they rebranded it a Lexus. And right before they were about to come out with it, they said, let's scrap all this. Let's redesign it still with a V10 and call it the LFA. And that's exactly what they did. The LFA came out, fell flat on its face because the price tag was $400,000. Nobody bought it and it just fell flat on its face. Every car that they sold, they lost money. These are facts. If you want to fact check me, you can, you know, fact check me. So the LFA was honestly supposed to be the Supra, but it came out as the LFA. So they said, you know, scrap that. And guys, I know this because I've ever since um, I fell in love with this car, I followed it and I followed the fact that when I fell in love with it, it was already discontinued. The Super got discontinued in the United States in 1998. Okay, that's the last model year for that car. I believe in Japan it was 2001, but it, you know it's the same body style. Like they didn't ever change it or anything like that. But in the states, the last model year was 98. So I fell in love with this car in 99, right before I went into high school. Um, right before my freshman year, I went to my cousin's house. And he showed me this video. So after watching that video, I fell in love with this car like i was like how does even back then guys in 1999 for a car to make 800 horsepower to the wheels was nuts like huh like they didn't even make sense in some things because there were supercars they weren't even close to that horsepower and this toyota was making this much power with stock bonnet men just a big turbo bolted onto the side of it some fuel and it was making so much power so that is where my love for this car came when i saw that video and it just grew from there once the um you know fast and the furious came out i went for to see fast and the furious just because the super was in that movie and if you ask any of my friends guys they will tell you the only car I've ever talked about my dream car of ever owning has been the Toyota Supra. So now that you know how much I love this car, you can see how disappointing it would be to, you know, tell you, hey, we're going to make a Supra. It's going to be great. You are excited about the Supra. And then they throw a 335 motor into it. Like how, like I can buy a 335 right now for like six grand, like a piece of junk. 335 six grand so you're gonna tell me you're gonna put an old motor like that do you understand when the 335 motor came out there's 2008 i believe was the first year that that n54 came out 2008 we are in 2019 so you're talking about an 11 year old motor going into a car that's supposed to break people's expectations. Does that even make sense? No. It makes zero sense. So people are like, oh, but that motor is awesome. Yes, it is awesome. Like, listen, I like BMW 335s. I think they're cool cars. I think they can make tons of power. I think that that motor was supposed to be the next 2J. Because people would talk about it like that. Hey, the Beamer motor. But is it as reliable as a 2J? No, because everybody would be doing them if they were as reliable. Yes, it's a fairly newer motor because the 2J has been out since um, early 90s. So I granted, like granted, this motor has not been out that long, but it's been out long enough to know that it's not going to be as good as a 2J. 
It's just not. Because for one, the parts are going to be way more expensive. Not to say that a 2J is not expensive to build because they are expensive to build. Toyotas in general are expensive to build. But 2Js, they are, there's so many parts and it's so available that it, there will never be a point where we say the N54 motor is better than the 2J. That's just never going to happen because we are living it right now. The 2J is an iconic motor. They're putting 2Js in everything. They're putting 2Js even in muscle cars. Like, it's an iconic motor. If you want to talk about what is the most swapped engine in the entire planet, there's going to be two engines that pop into your head. And as soon as I said that, I guarantee you two engines came into your head. The LS and the 2J. Those are the two most swapped motors, I think, in the history of racing are literally, seriously, those two engines have been swapped millions of times probably right now. By now. Seriously. Millions of times. So, is it possible that this motor is going to be better than the 2J? No. Not even, like, just think about it. Like, look at the point of the 2J, where it's at right now. Like, this is a motor that makes 2,500 horsepower, you know, there are vehicles that make 2,500 horsepower. It's been fives in the quarter. Like, it's an iconic motor. Close to 300 miles an hour in the quarter mile. Like, it's an iconic motor. And to get the name of the Supra and put a Beamer motor and share it with a Z4, that is, like, sacrilege, bro. Like, seriously, in the church of Toyota Supra, that is sacrilege. <laughs> but anyways, most of you probably like, oh, he's crying like a baby, blah, 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 blah. The truth of the matter is the expectation for the Supra was astronomical. And this is a letdown. Now, what would be my alternative? Because I know Toyota is a business. And guys, Toyota has become a, a company of people mover. Like, they just make A to B cars. And they're starting to make a little more stylish cars. Like, the new Camry looks really nice. Even the new Camry. Okay, let me just put it to you this way, guys. The Toyota Supra has 330 horsepower. That's what it's going to come out with. Okay? The Toyota Camry has 300 horsepower, 30 horsepower less than a Toyota Supra, okay? So to put that in perspective, guys, your $50,000 Toyota only has 30 more horsepower than a grocery getter. Yeah. The original Toyota Supra had... 320 horsepower, 315 foot-pounds of torque. The new Toyota Super has 330 horsepower, 375 foot-pounds of torque, I believe. I think, I think those numbers are pretty correct. Do those numbers sound astronomically different? No. As a matter of fact, they sound pretty close. The 0 to 60 time, supposedly, of the new Supra is 4 seconds. The 0 to 60 time in the old Supra is 5 seconds. Curb weight for a MK4, 3,200 pounds. Curb weight for this one, 3,000 pounds. Guys, do you see what I'm saying here? Like, the new Supra is pretty much as fast as the original Supra back in 1993. Stock for stock. Like, what sense in any, like, motor car enthusiast world does that make? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And it's disappointing because Toyota makes some killer motors. That motor was built in the 90s, early 90s, and we are still using it today, the 2JZ. Like, 
That's how iconic that motor is. Toyota can build iconic motors. And for some reason, they decided to throw a BMW motor in the Toyota Supra, a company that makes the 2JZ, a company that's made the 3S Beams motor, a company that's made the 4AGE 20 valve, a company that's made the 2ZZ, a company that's made the 1UZ, the 3UZ, the 3GR, I mean the 2GR, which is the 3.5 liter V6. Guys, Toyota can make motors. Good quality motors. The 2JZ can handle a thousand horsepower with a stock bottom end. That is an amazing feat. Toyota can make killer motors. And what like what Toyota enthusiasts were expecting was Toyota to go to their engineers and say, make me a motor to put in the Supra. Not, hey, let's go to BMW and give them a straight six so they can be happy. Because honestly, some people were saying, oh, they should just put a 2J in it or a straight six. Because they were hearing all these garbage ideas that Toyota was coming out with saying that they were going to put like make it a hybrid motor or put a four cylinder in it or do this. And they're like, you know what? Let's make the public happy. Partner up with BMW, who's already making a straight six twin turbo and stuff that in there so people can shut up. That is not what we wanted. That is not what we wanted. We wanted you to engineer a good motor to put in the Supra, the most iconic car you've ever made. And what you've made is an RX8. RX That's what you've made. You've made an RX8. What does that mean? That means that you were coming out with something that was supposed to be awesome and you made garbage. An RX8 is what you made. Because if you think about an RX-7 and when they were coming out with the RX-8, everybody was excited about it. It was another rotary. And when it came out, it was garbage. It was a letdown. And this is exactly what's going to happen with the Supra. It is going to be a letdown. Not because of the horsepower it can make or... um, The motor's potential, because guys, I will tell you, this car will have 500 horsepower, 600 horsepower. People will make these cars fast, but they will not be reliable. They will be beaters in 10 years. I just, this is what I think. I may be 100% wrong, guys, but in a mechanical standpoint from a mechanical standpoint and a mechanics view of a car bmw is far from reliable far it's a far cry from reliability so it doesn't make sense to me why toyota would do this so yes will the car make power sure sure it'll make six seven eight hundred horsepower but will it be as iconic as the 2J, where everybody's swapping motors into, like, the Supra had a lot of high expectations. And I'm not saying that the new Supra should have beat the expectations of the old Supra, because sometimes, like, sometimes you get things so perfect that it's hard to overcome that. And I really feel like the 2J was that. It was just the perfect motor at the perfect time. People just blew it up. But I feel like it's going to be the same thing over again. Super comes out. It's supposed to be something crazy. And it's just a disappointment. Sales will plummet. And no more Supra. And who knows? Maybe along in the future, um, they'll make, you know, the N54 better. I don't know, man. Honestly, like, it's not going to be better than the 2J. Like, we already know this. It's never going to be better than 2J. So I don't ever see it surpassing the legacy of the 2J. But it is what it is, man. That's my rant for the night. (laughs) Um, But yeah, guys. So that's my thought on the Supra. I was excited about it. I was honestly, 
my goal is to own a, a MK4 Supra. So a Mark IV Supra. Um, I don't know when that's going to be, but that is my goal um, to eventually own a, a Supra. So I was excited about this one because maybe I was like, you know what? Maybe I can own a, you know, a newer Supra. Uh, in the future, the very, very distant future. <laughs> um, but I, I'm honestly, I don't think I would ever own one. Knowing the motor that's in there, it's not a Toyota. It's literally a Beamer Z4. It's not a Toyota. So it's a little disappointing. Car looks great. I think it looks good. Um, but it's it's a very big disappointment. Like I said. I feel like it's the RX-8 <laughs> of Toyota. You know what I mean? It's like the biggest letdown ever. But a lot of you might like it. A lot of you might think that I'm full of crap and you're going to own it. And you're gonna like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But I guarantee you, if you own it for more than three years, you're going to feel my pain. And you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to reliability. You might not see it now. A lot of people probably think I'm talking crap, but hey, what do I know? I just work on cars all day. Um, so, like I said, guys, it might be a good car, but it's a letdown. And I, I am not the only Toyota enthusiast that feels that way. There's a lot of people out there that are like, what are they doing? It doesn't even make sense. The most... The biggest car company on the planet gets together. The biggest and most reliable car company on the planet gets together with BMW and calls it a Supra. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know what the Toyota execs were thinking on this one. But anyways, that's my thoughts on the car. The car looks awesome. I, I really do like the way it looks. But it's just a shell of itself, really. <laughs> I guess that's the perfect way to say it. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's pretty much just me talking about the Supra and why I think it's going to be, I guess, I don't know, garbage. <laughs> but um, But yeah, if you don't agree with me, whatever. If you do... You're a true Toyota enthusiast. If you don't agree with me, it's because you haven't owned a Toyota long enough or um, you're probably not even old enough to know anything that I'm talking about. But like I said, this new Toyota, it's not a super to me. So hashtag not my super. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you have a good night. I will be having another video pretty soon. Good things to come for the Corolla. And I hope you enjoy this video. Don't kill me too much in the comments. Peace out.